the you know, if you want to. I was just uh, testing it. Sorry. Okay. No, no problem. <laughs> and what I'm about to say is is actually kind of coincidental with that, because it it even though it is recorded, uh, and ordinarily if you're sitting in the same room, somebody might say, you know, I make a motion that you know, whatever that motion might be, uh, and everybody says I. That's not the way you should do it on the virtual meeting. That there should be a uh, um, you should ask call do a roll call and ask each member to to say whether they vote yay or nay yes or no to uh to the motion that's on the table yeah everybody can go around the room and say something right that yeah i've done that before in other meetings where it, you every, each person absolutely has to go around and say yes or no correct you don't have to give necessarily you can give you know discussion of reasons and and you know you you will have a, you can have a debate about any you know motion that's on the table uh, you don't have to, you know, everyone is not compelled to state exactly how they feel, but you are compelled to, to you know, vote on the, uh, on the, on this question when it, once it's put, you want somebody to formulate the motion. Ken, um, do we listen to everyone and then say thank you very much and then they talk or everybody stays while they, while they make a decision? It's, it's really up to the commission. You, you commission, you could even say, uh, you know, Thank you. Um, you know, we we want to deliberate about this. This I don't expect this hearing is going to go a long time, but let's just say for the sake of argument that it did, um, you could decide. All right, we're going to adjourn this hearing to next week or whenever, and then have another session where you deliberate about it. You really have a great deal of discretion of how you handle it, but you should treat it like a hearing. And when the hearing's closed, then that you're not going to be receiving more information from, from either side. You'll just go into your deliberations. Bonnie, is there any way we could uh, hopefully, hopefully if all things go well, um, I, this is just an idea I think is best, like dismiss the two people and then we stay on this Zoom call and try to hash out what we think and then, then they get a letter. Is that possible, attorney? No, it is no. not. Um, it, no. It's possible. The only the only reason it's not is under the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, um, gotcha. So everybody gets to everyone. So we need to, to have them just stay here and hash it out. Right. Like they, 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 if they wish to, if they wish to drop off, they could. Um, they don't have to stay for the deliberations. But uh, okay. oh, all right. So the chair should probably just say that. You know, sure. okay, we're done with the hearing. You certainly have the right to stay, uh, but if you don't wish to, you do not have to. Okay. I got you. Yep. Ken, was the landlord responsible for notifying the tenant by certified mail in any timeline between the notice and the receipt to vacate the property? Yeah. Did he receive person. anything? I don't know. It does, the person's letter doesn't state that they basically received a new lease from what I read. And they they had been trying to get in touch with the new uh, landlord, is what it this what what we all received says that they've been busy trying to get in touch with them. The landlord never got in touch with them. And that's what we'll we'll hear more about. And then um, what's I going to say? Oh, Ken, what? Okay, so decision is made, and then we have to then my office would notify them, right? Whether they stay on or they don't, we got to notify mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. right. And then what if the landlord says, okay, town, I don't really care. I'm doing whatever I want to do. The statute allows you to, to go to the superior court to enforce. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's who's, on, who's that on? Is that on the town of Weathersfield to do that? What dime? Um, That's what I'm asking. Whose dime is that? <laughs> it's probably <laughs> yours. <laughs> it is probably yours. What I do know is, initially it is, I don't, what I don't know is whether the there, I don't believe there is a provision in there. It just says that you have the power to petition the court um, for enforcement, including the power to the superior court for temporary injunctive relief um, to the complainant will otherwise occur or for any relief authorized by these other two statutes. So I don't know, I don't, I can look at those other two statutes before the hearing to see whether or not, well, it, whether or not the, the uh, the, the the court can order the landlord to pay um, if there is a uh, 
if there, we prove that there was a violation and they ignored us, but not important for today's hearing, obviously important to decide whether if he, you know, if the landlord ignores you, whether right. you take it to the next step. So certainly we'll answer the question. Okay. Um, is the, uh, is, is the, now the landlord's bringing an, an attorney, is that correct? We don't know. We don't know that, okay. So we don't know that, okay. okay. All right, any more questions about the procedure or what we're gonna do and otherwise you, know, you will be able to, after the hearings close, you will be able to get feedback from me um, as you know, as counsel to the, to the commission. So I, you know, we can hash through some of the things you heard as part of the deliberations. Um, so that that can happen. Um, and, and I, you know, I will likely not jump in uh, during the process, but I can, I might, I might, you know, say, you know, madam or, or Mr. Chair, um, I'd suggest this or that, but for the most part, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be on the sidelines. Uh -huh. from there. Okay, um, so I'll start the I meeting, Ken, and um, have everybody introduce themselves and have them vote for a chair, and then I'll hand it to the chair. Exactly. And it sounds like okay. there might be a question. Um, as far as of being chair, I prefer not to be chair because I think there are people that have more experience in this whole, um, somebody is a, a renter, somebody else is a realtor and somebody else is a landlord. But I have a question of the, in determining under, you know, one through how many things they were here. Would the um, chair ask the question, are the rents charged for the same number of rooms? I have to ask questions of all these particular what, 13 or 14 points here. No, no, you don't have to ask about all those, but if any one of those, um, you know, th those are the things that should be considered, but you are, you know, your job is not to make the complainant's case out on the one hand. Okay. On the other hand, you are welcome to ask all those questions. You, 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 oh, okay. So, all right. so it's, there is no right or wrong on that one. And all anybody right. can ask those questions. Am I correct with that? Not just the chairman. That's correct, although it should be normal decorum. The chairman should recognize someone to, you know, some, okay, some the chairman's gonna say, does anyone else have any questions? And then, you know, you you, you raise your hand so, or what have you. So first the complainant gives all the complaints and then it goes from there? Complainants first, and then any questions you, you might have of the complainant. And then if the complainant doesn't have any other witnesses, then turn it to the respondent. The respondent, yeah. yeah. And then same thing, the respondent will put on, you know, whatever evidence they think is, is, you know, relevant. And then you'll be able to ask them questions. Okay. Anybody else? Diane or is Lindsay, it? are you interested in being the chair? I'd rather not, I'm a little overextended. Diane, I'm looking at you. Oh my. And you just look like an amazing chairperson. <laughs> I have, I have to be honest. I really don't know what I'm doing. I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be your chair, but okay. I'll, I'll help. I'll help guide you in terms of any okay. procedural process that to the extent that you have, and don't be afraid to, you know. To, to, to so in the in the beginning, part. like when we open this up at five thirty to uh, the tenant and the landlord. Do I just like open it up? I, I introduce everybody or no, I go around and have everybody introduce themselves because we all haven't really met face to face other than Bonnie and I. Mm -hmm. And um, and then give the tenant and then put the give the floor to the tenant and let them talk. Yeah. Well, the, the, essentially, yes. I mean, yes. and Bonnie, are you planning to be on the line in the beginning of the call or are you just going to be on this one? No, no, no. I'm going to be on. I got to learn so, just in case there's so more I, of these. So I, ideally, Bonnie, if you would introduce, um, yeah. you, know, the, just, you don't have to go into, to, you have everyone introduce themselves and, and said a little bit about themselves yeah. for our purposes. You don't need to do that in the hearing. I mean, you've been, you're seated because you're, you're oh, in, okay. in a particular role. So, um, but Bonnie, if you, you know, if you remember who is the landlord, who's the tenant, et cetera, uh, you could introduce everybody that way. Uh, okay, and then okay. at that point, one of you needs to make a motion, um, you know, it, for you know, Diane McAdams to be chair, uh, to be chair, and then it gets seconded and then a vote. Uh, 
Bonnie, at that point, there's no chair, so you could call for the vote. Uh, and yeah. then once that, once that vote is had, then uh, then then you you'd be chair, unless people have it change their mind between now and five thirty. <laughs> Okay. And then at that point, once you you assume chairmanship, uh, and that uh, that you would uh, you, you would explain um, or ask me to explain the procedure, and I'd be happy to do it if you, if you if you'd like me to. But the procedure about what we've been talking about, how the uh, the you, you, that there are documents that are in record, um, and you'd ask. And I don't know how does everybody feel about you know what's been. Uh, what's been submitted being being read um, or just identified? Well, Say that again, Ken. Things that have been submitted uh, with the complaint, um, they, it could they could be let, literally read into the record, or they could simply just be identified as being part of the record. Hmm. Well, I'd be willing to read it if you want somebody to read it. That's up to you guys. Because that gives a lot of information, and then the person, the respondent, can go from there. I mean, the complainant. I think, yeah, I think that might be helpful just in case people are nervous. Mm -hmm. It might help jog his memory to hear what he wrote. And I don't, okay. I don't disagree. I, I'd be willing to read that. And, and then it, after you've read that, you say that you know this, you know, this is the complaint while we're while we were here, and and we have to consider a number of factors uh, in the. Uh, um, that chair can take oh, over after say that. <laughs> right, right. The, the, the chair, and, and you say we consider a number of factors, and we'll first hear from uh, the 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 complainant, and after the complainant, any witness, the you know the, the complainant speaks, the complainant will be asked questions, could be asked questions of uh, of the commission, and if the complainant has any other witnesses, each of their witnesses uh, would be there. We should um, we should swear. Uh, and I, I can do this for you, but we can swear the witnesses in to just swear or affirm that the testimony that they'll give is uh, is the truth um, uh, under penalties of perjury. And and I can do that for you with each each person when they come up, and then explain that, that then the respondent will have an opportunity to present evidence. And again, when the respondent starts, if if the chair can remember but if somebody else you know i might jump in and just say you know we need to swear the witness in and i would go ahead and do that and then the that witness would proceed and present you know their their pitch and then again you ask questions and then once you're satisfied that everyone's had you know you give the last word to, to, to the complainant uh and then you can uh, close the hearing and you can so people, once the hearing is closed, then the discussion will, will be limited to discussion of members of the commission and council. Uh, there'll be no more information received by the plaintiff. You can almost give them the last, you know, this is the last your last chance we're going to close the hearing. Is there anything else we need to know? Uh, and go from there. Okay. Now you know, we, we'll I think that's a good idea. You're going to swear. I have a question. Are you, yes. you're going to swear in everybody? Yes. The uh, complainant? witnesses and responded. Good. Okay. Thanks. And it's probably easier to do it one at a time. Sometimes when we know if there's four people yeah. that were going to be there, you could swear everybody at once, but people might be coming in and out. So probably I think it makes sense to do it before we, any any person is going to speak before the commission then then when that person yeah. when you ask the, is there someone here for the complainant, the person says yes, then at that point you said we'd ask to have you sworn in. I'd swear them in and off you go. That's good. And Ken, if the group wanted further information, could they table it to another meeting? Absolutely. Okay. And if the, you know, if the, so if, if the complainant says that, you know, I have all this, you know, I know all, I've, all of these things and, you know, you, I, I'm just dreaming up what it, what it might be, but just whatever it might be. And you think that it would be helpful to have more detail on that. Uh, you could ask for it and continue hearing another day. So that would be another hearing? Yes. It'd be a continuation of the hearing. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So they the don't... same thing when you're done, if you think you need more time to review every, I mean, this, this is not one of the things we're going to get a lot of information, I'm guessing. But if you got a pile of things submitted to you and you don't feel comfortable that you're not ready to vote on it, but you're ready to close the public hearing, that's also an option that you could discuss and say, I'm, I'm not comfortable deciding this tonight. I think we can do all this material. 
Um, I don't think you're going to get that, but you might. And if you do, then you could decide that you'll close the hearing, but you'll adjourn for further deliberations to a date. You'd have to identify when you'd adjourn to, or at least provide everybody notice. If you didn't have a date tonight, you'd have to provide notice to both sides when the next, you know, point so that they can. All right. Anybody else questions or? Ken, do me a favor. I think I figured this iPad out. See if you can, because Cheryl also made, I think yep, you're going to be able to. You, bingo, pardon? bingo. I said bingo. Uh, yep. So, and um, one, two, three. I want to see if you can yep, screen no. share. Here we go. And do you see? You did the, it. The criteria? Okay. Yep. All Excellent. right. Those, those are the ones I read before. And then thanks, this Cheryl. You can do, so perfect. I think you sent this out to us, though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I made a copy of that. I, I did too. I have it sitting in front of me. Perfect. I can't tell you how many times we've been involved with commissioners that are deciding something and they, <laughs> they've never I've looked at it and certainly don't have the regulation with them. So that's great. Yeah, I have it right here. Yeah. All right. So I okay. talk to you in a few. Okay. Then and don't forget, it's a different Zoom link. Yep, so yep, yep. You've got 20 minutes until 5 30, but you got to go in the other link. It's two separate yep. meetings. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> and I think Cheryl, I think Cheryl resent out both of yes. them. Um, you, want did, yeah. you want the uh, link? Just today she did? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just like just before this meeting started, she sent them out I, again. Okay. Think, All right. Is this the oh. link 9643088 2562? That's the one. Okay. All right, folks. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. See you soon.